it's officially spring and the best time to get out and paint. So I've put together a series of 10 days of everything that you need to know to get started with plein air painting. It's five things that I love about plein air painting and why you should try it too. The first thing I love about it is that it improves your art. When you're outside painting, you're looking at everything the way that it exists in real life. You see colors differently. You see a depth to them that you don't get from a photograph. It helps you see shapes and form and color in a different way that will make you a better painter. The second thing I love about it is that it's meditative. When I'm out painting, everything calms down. My heart rate is lower, my anxiety and my stress levels are lower, and it's a really calming, meditative experience. The third thing is that it's a visual diary of your life, and not just a visual diary, but a sensory one as well. If I go back and I look at something that I painted outside, I remember everything about that day, what I ate, what it felt like, what the weather was like, what was happening. It's a perfect visual and sensory diary. The fourth thing is that it makes you feel alive and connected to the world. It makes you feel like you're actually a part of the world, which is really something that's important where screens monopolize so many hours of our days. And it also will improve your creativity. Whenever I get artist block, I just go out and paint and it jump starts that creativity again. And the fifth thing is that it makes you see the world in a different way. The colors look brighter. The whole world is completely different after a plein air painting experience. It's like being on some kind of mind altering drug, except the mind altering drug is nature. And so for all of these reasons, I think that you should give it a try as well. Here are the essentials you need for plein air painting watercolor edition. To start, you'll need some watercolor paint and a palette. Palettes can be metal, plastic, or have a built-in water container and flask. They can even be tiny. For drawing, you'll want mechanical pencils or real ones with a sharpener, or a few watercolor pencils or some waterproof fine liners, and an eraser. Water and a pot or two to hold it, these are collapsible, or some water brushes, in which case you don't need the water or pots. A few brushes and something to carry them in, maybe even travel brushes which can open up and be stored in some palettes. You can paint on watercolor postcards or watercolor sketchbooks of any size. It's not necessary, but it's nice to have a board and some clips to put it all on in case there isn't a table. Any board will do some paper towels and tissues for cleaning up, and some type of pencil case to hold it all. Here's a little peek of mine. Finally, a bag to put it all in. This is my favorite. And now you're ready to paint. Here is everything you need for plein air painting, oil painting edition. The first thing you need are some paints. I recommend starting with no more than eight colors and a bag or a box to store them in. A palette knife and chip brush are handy but optional and some brushes. I prefer flats with something to protect them like this brush roll and something to put your dirty brushes in after. A small container or two for mediums and thinner and a jar for water or thinner. I use water mixable oil so it's all non-toxic. Some paper towels for cleaning your brushes and wet wipes for your hands. I keep mine in this apron, and a bag for rubbish. If you decide you love plein air painting, there are loads of fancy Peshat boxes and portable easels to choose from. But to start, a cigar or wooden box will give you a palette on the bottom and a place to clip your canvas on the lid. I recommend wooden and canvas boards to paint on and a way to bring your wet paintings home. There are lots of options for that, but a picture frame and Velcro work great. Finally, a bag to carry it all. And now you're ready to go. Here are five of my favorite items for plein air painting. Number one is a hat with a brim. This will protect your eyes from the sun and help you see the colors better when it's a sunny day. It also keeps your hair out of your face and better protects your skin. Number two is a folding sit mat. It's lightweight, portable, and gives you a softer seat, especially if you sit on a lot of rocks to paint like I do. It also insulates you from cold and wet surfaces, which is really helpful. Number three is a view catcher. It helps you find interesting compositions. You can even clip it next to your painting to help. It's a mid-value gray with two holes to help you isolate colors in the landscape, and you can adjust it to be the same proportions as your painting. Number four are red sunglasses. These help you see the different values, especially if there are a lot of greens. Any transparent red filter will do the same. And number five is my athletic wristband. I put this on my wrist to easily clean my brush while I'm painting. Only do this if your colors are non-toxic. It's absorbent and keeps my hands free for painting. What's your favorite? This is me plein air painting a few years ago, and here I am with some of my students. And here are some more of my students over the years painting outside in all sorts of weather. I've learned a lot about how to dress for plein air painting, and some things are the same as they were in the 1800s. John Singer Sargent painted many of his friends while they painted, and white or neutral colors, hats, and umbrellas were all common, and you can still see that today. 
Sunlight reflects off of your clothes and onto the canvas, so wearing neutral colors is important. A hat with a brim will both protect you from the sun and also help you see colors better. Wearing long sleeves also offers protection and keeps you cooler. Using an umbrella or painting in the shade helps too because colors look brighter in direct sunlight and might actually look dark and muddy once inside. Weather is unpredictable, so keeping a rain jacket handy helps and a pair of gaiters is good if you're in an area where there are ticks. Dressing for the weather will make the experience much more enjoyable. Have you always wanted to try painting outside but you're too afraid? Here are some things you can try. Start by finding a place in your garden or outside your home. Most people feel self-conscious about strangers when they start, but if your back is to a wall, you'll be secluded enough. The same is true for outdoor cafes or coffee shops. If you have a car, you can paint from the inside. This gives you the benefits of painting from real life within the security of a familiar place. Later, when you're feeling braver, try painting with a door open or from the back. Pick locations where there aren't a lot of people. Try standing beside your car. Most people won't even notice. Eventually, you'll feel ready to venture further. Pick quiet areas on days when the weather is overcast and fewer people will be out. If you stand against trees or foliage, you'll feel more private. People are less likely to notice you or ask to see your painting if you're off the main path. Wear a coat and a hood if you feel afraid of being recognized. I'm being silly now, but I promise most people are more interested in themselves than you. So get out and try it. I believe in you. If you'd like to paint outside and you have a car, then here are some tips for you. Create an art nook where you can sit and paint in bad weather. This could even be the boot of your car. Keep a few essentials handy like a rain jacket, hat, gloves, wet wipes, paper towels, and some water. Tissues always come in handy. A hat for sunny days, and a box for essential items can double as a table. I keep things I often forget inside. Red sunglasses, safflower oil, clips, and on the bottom, some cheap brushes, a palette knife, biodegradable bags. You can personalize it to suit your needs. For shorter sessions, an inexpensive table like this is great. You hook it onto your steering wheel and have an instant table. I painted this in my little Peshat box right here, and the locals came by to admire it. I've also done tiny paintings here. Keeping a pencil case with basic supplies also helps. I store it in the pouch behind my seat and tuck the table right here. Remember, the more you paint from life, the better your art will become. Here are three super small watercolor palettes for travel. The first is made from a business card holder. Inside, you can place your favorite colors and there's a larger well in the lid for mixing. You can pair it with a teeny tiny notebook for very small paintings or a mid-sized traveler's notebook. The paper is for drawing, but it's thick enough for light washes. These were sent to me by Natsume Handmade on Etsy and it all stores together nicely for travel. The second is a tiny wooden palette with eight wells made by GoDraw with a small sketchbook by Inkberry. They clip together for easy painting and it's quick to set it up and put it away. If you've seen any of my videos before, you'll know that this is a favorite. And the third is a handmade kit. I made the pencil case and the tiny palette from an empty tin. Inside are six wells and the lid can be used for mixing. I've paired it with this adorable sketchbook by Natsume Handmade, which can be clipped to the sketchbook. A few pencils and an aqua brush are all you need. Many people think that to paint outside, they need to brave crowds or paint fancy landmarks like castles or other places of significance. But the truth is that there's beauty to be found everywhere if you just stop to look for it. This is a river next to a car park on a rainy day when I wanted to go home and have a duvet day. I made myself paint instead and was really happy I did. Here's another river behind a grocery store. I was stuck there after getting my eyes dilated at the eye doctor. I made a few new friends and painted the scene. This is a thin strip of land outside of a hotel next to a busy motorway, but look at how the sunrise is peeking through the trees. You can paint anything, anywhere, in any weather. Here I was stuck in the rain waiting for the printer. I wanted to nap or look at my phone, but instead I painted this. When I first started painting plein air, sometimes I'd drive for hours looking for the perfect scene, but you can paint your own garden or someone else's. This is my mom's. You can paint at parks or cafes or regular old neighborhoods. One thing I know is that I'm always glad I did, and I hope you try it too. Have you ever tried a water brush? These clever brushes make travel painting so much easier. They hold water in the handle, eliminating the need for a separate pot of water. This is the Pentel Aquash brush, which is my favorite. To fill it, you unscrew the top and fill the reservoir with water. Some brands unscrew in the opposite direction, so it can be confusing. The bristles are synthetic, so they do stain, but they keep their point, which is important. The cap snaps on the bottom, which makes it harder to lose. The other brand I like is Derwin. Both have bristles that stay wet and a barrel that is easy to squeeze if you want more water. I usually carry a medium and large Pentel and a small Derwin, but I use the large one 90% of the time. 
Because they're always wet, it's easy to mix light colors. If you want darker ones, just add more pigment. And if you want a dry brush effect, dry the bristles before adding paint and hold the brush with the tip up. To clean it, gently squeeze a few drops of water and wipe it on a cloth. You can also wet the paper this way. What do you think? Now that I've introduced you to some of the reasons you might like to try painting outside, along with some of the essential supplies, clothes, and places to try it, it's time for you to get out and give it a try for yourself. If you're feeling shy or self-conscious, remember that almost everyone is afraid at first. Try some of the things I mentioned here, and remember, even the most accomplished of artists started at the beginning. You can do it too. I believe in you. I'll be starting a new series of shorts soon where I give you tips and techniques for some of the technical aspects like how to choose the perfect composition, how to simplify the landscape, and the nuts and bolts of atmospheric perspective. So subscribe and click the bell for notifications if you're interested. Happy painting!